Hello, nerds. Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This show is your week in nerddom, and on this week's week in nerddom, we've got some Mortal Kombat 11 news. We have Fox is playing nice with Disney, it would seem, or at least they're trying to. Uh, Shazam casting announcements. Wes Borland is back in the music news, and so much more is going on. Before we go too far into things, let's cue that music. guys so before we get into the news about the news there is a little bit of news about the channel that we should touch on uh, at the beginning of today's show this week's show uh, first we have uh, there's I was slacking a little bit I have uh, an adventure in photography scheduled and it's been scheduled for a couple weeks and I just have not been on my game as far as getting the word out to you guys so that I can get a little bit of feedback for some goal pictures. Uh, I will be hitting Twitter real hard over the next couple days because this video will not be posted until after uh, the photo shoot happens. Um, if, if in case you're curious, because I have not said it specifically, uh, the shoot is, uh, I got asked by Travis and Duke, the guys from the most recent episode of Adventures in Photography, uh, they are performing at the Aggie in Fort Collins with Ritz, so it's a hip hop show, um, and so I'm, I'm going to photograph the entire show they asked me to come photograph them but i'm i'm gonna take pictures of everything uh because it's it's an opportunity so why not take it uh so yeah that is going to be i, I still have one more adventure to post before i am to that video but like i said i'm gonna hit the twitter i'm gonna get up on the instagram um all over the facebook to uh start hitting you guys up to see if there's some feedback you want uh, some pre-feedback i guess <laughs> Uh, is there a specific shot you want to see? Uh, should I try and get more backstage stuff because that's not something that a lot of people see of or should I just focus to uh, the, the acts on stage? Uh, just a little bit of feedback from you guys. So, or, and, and, and I'll try and do a supplemental video uh, add to the supplement because I've been doing supplements every week for Walking Dead and such. So I'll add to that supplement um, some of the results from that shoot. So there you go. And other news about the channel. This isn't like news news. This is just a reminder. There is a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Generally Nerdy. If you guys like what I'm trying to do here, definitely head on over to that direction. There's always a, a link down in the description. Uh, head on over there. You guys can support what I'm doing here. Uh, for just a dollar a month. And, and that will go an incredible long way. You wouldn't believe dollar a month gets you early access to videos if you want to give more then there's obviously a lot more that you can get in return for that extra support uh, that being said let's get into the news <clears throat> all right video game news i teased it at the beginning of the episode i'm just gonna come out the gate with it we're talking mortal kombat 11. there has been some leaks um, how reliable these leaks are, I don't know. Uh, it, this is apparently from the same anonymous source inside of NetherRealm Studios that leaked all the information about Injustice 2, uh, that, like, 95% of that information turned out to be accurate. So, uh, keep that in mind, and we're gonna go over, I ha I'm just gonna read it off the printout. Um, so, yeah, same source as the Injustice 2 leak. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 is planned to have a roster of 30 characters with an additional 10 characters for DLC. So that's 40 total characters. Uh, that is more than Injustice by one, uh, unless you count the Ninja Turtles as each individual character. Uh, we'll get into that DLC stuff 
uh, when we talk about the E League championships and the awesomeness that was part of that broadcast. So, uh, larger. Re- there, there will be. The, it'll be another three pack of fighter packs. Uh, of the 30 combatants, 17 will be returning from XL. Seven will be returning from previous games. Six of those seven will be from the 3D era of games. So I know technically this is still 3D. However, uh, the the Mortal Kombat eras are broken into the original 2D era, so Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 effectively, and then what they call the 3D era, which kind of sort of was brought in by Mortal Kombat 4. Uh, or, or some people refer to them as the arcade era and the uh, home release era because Mortal Kombat 4 was technically the first 3D game, uh, but it was released in the arcades and still had similar play style, whereas everything from 4 on, so Deadly Alliance, Deception, so on and so forth, um, those games are referred to as the 3D games or the home release games because they were really poorly done in 3D, and they did not get an arcade release. And now we're into the current era, so as of Mortal Kombat 11, or the reboot era. As of Mortal Kombat 11, it's back to the similar play style of the arcade releases, where you're on a 2D plane, but it's definitely a 3D game. So calling them the 3D era games is a little bit of a misnomer. Anyway, Mortal Kombat nerd, I know, it's a thing. Um... So, six of them being from the 3D era titles, that means we get one possibly new character from uh, the arcade era, which would be really cool because there's some really great talent there that we didn't get in the last uh, two games. At the very least, in the last game. Um, Where does that leave me? And the final six of the 30 will be brand new to this game. Um, characters who are only in the game as story mode NPCs, like Sindel and Rain and uh, Baraka. Yes, Sindel and Rain and Baraka uh, in XL. We'll, we'll get a couple more of those in this in Mortal Kombat 11. Don't know who they are yet. That part hadn't leaked out, but uh, there will be some of those. So there's going to be a lot of fanboys. There's going to be a lot of PC hacks like we saw with XL. Um, where you can play as these characters, but we're going to get a lot of fanboys really pissed off that we can't properly play as these characters, uh, and we're just going to have to deal with it. The Also, returning our brutalities, variations like we got in the last uh, XL. Uh, Something to note, anyone deceased that is still dead in XL uh, will remain dead in the story. So, Nightwolf, Sindel, Shinnok, Smoke, Cabal, Molina, Shao Kahn, Kintaro, Motaro, Baraka, Striker, uh, Su Hao, who died in the comics. Um, I think Havoc is dead in the comics as well. No, 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 Havoc's still alive. Uh, Rico is the one that died in the comics. So I know there was a lot of people really, really pushing for Rico. Uh, and yeah, I don't think that's happening. Although it's Mortal Kombat. Nobody freaking stays dead in Mortal Kombat. It's, it's almost as bad as uh, comic books. Nobody stays dead in comic book world either. So it's Mortal Kombat. It's likely that we're going to get something more. Uh, there's, it's, it's possible that anyone who's dead could come back in a, in a future game. S- technically speaking, Sindel was dead in uh, Mortal Kombat 2, but we still got her in Mortal Kombat 3 because that's the nature of these games. Anyway, um, so... Da-da-da-da-da. Then the leak mentions the 17 base roster characters that he has already seen artwork and some renderings for, quote unquote. Uh, so the list is Kano, Lee Mei, Noob Saibot, Bo Raicho, Johnny Cage, Shang Tsung, Jade, Dagon, uh, Cassie Cage, Jackie Briggs, Frost, Kenshi, Kotal Kahn, Jax, and Onaga. Um, I call bullshit on Onaga. I call bullshit on Dagon. Though he does later say in the leak that 
uh, Taven will be one of the NPCs that we see in... So I guess he does list an NPC. Taven will make an appearance as an NPC in the story mode. <coughs> so if that's true, then maybe Dagon will be in there. But I really think they're trying to distance themselves from that uh, Armageddon storyline. So I don't think that's super likely. Um, now, going off from what we know of A, how they structure their, their rosters to begin with, and B, some of the final stories uh, in the ladder from XL, we know, we, we obviously know that there are absolutely three characters who are going to be in this game. Raiden, Sub-Zero, and Scorpion. Those three will never not be in another Mortal Kombat game. That's just not going to happen. Th those three are the ones that make the guest appearances in the other NetherRealm games and the other Midway games back in the day. Scorpion was in freaking PsyOps, for real. Um, so those three are going to be in the game. And then we've also got Sonya, Aaron Black, uh... Takeda, Liu Kang, obviously Liu Kang and Katana are, I, that's, that's seriously the obvious, uh, antagonist for the, oh, and also a retraction from the last video, I kept saying protagonist, I really meant antagonist, so please don't give me too much hell, anyway, uh, Triborg, Tanya, Kung Lao, Kung Jin, Kit, uh, Katana we've already covered, Devora, Tremor, and Goro, I doubt we're gonna see another Goro, um, I just feel like that's a dead horse that they're, they're done beaten. So, uh, I that's a fairly solid list. I feel like there's a lot of fan favorites on there. Um, that doesn't really list anyone new. So I don't know that that that's probably as on aside from Onaga and Dagon. That's probably. A fair assumption anyway you could just guess those characters and you'd be right I, Lee May also I, I kind of I halfway call bullshit on Lee May because like they didn't put her in the last game she was an NPC why would I, uh, maybe it'll be explained in the story I don't know but I just I don't know that she was a strong enough character to begin with uh, but there was a lot of fan outcry if she's there why don't we get to play as her because she was weak man like that wasn't she wasn't a good fighter uh, so, do, 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 do. Taven and Nitara. Oh, so there's two, uh, NPCs that he lists. Taven and Nitara. So, maybe we get a little bit of, uh, Nitara, Reptile, and a mention of Chameleon in the storyline. I feel like that would be cool. That would be the only reason to bring, uh, Nitara back into the series. In my eyes, anyway. Um, and then... There are two of the supposed newcomers were that he's seen artwork for are a character called Dominic and Selena, and he describes Selena is a dream goddess that apparently has psychic powers and can create things out of thin air and then use them as weapons. Dominic is Kano's son and is part of the Red Dragon with Dagon, not the Black Dragon, which Kano is the head of. Supposedly, he hates his father. Uh, so that kind of adds an element to the the layered grudges that we have going on here. So that's really interesting. I hope that my one my one big hope. I mean, I've got him tattooed on my freaking calf. Is Noob Saibot. Noob Saibot is easily one of my favorite characters in this in this uh, mythology, and I was super bummed that he was not in XL. That there was barely even a mention of him in XL, and what little mention there was was just in an intro uh, dialogue between Sub Zero and random people. There would there were there were mentions of Bihan, and I I just I really. The, my two favorite characters, I'm a Scorpion guy, I've always been a Scorpion guy, will always be a Scorpion guy, ever since the first game in the arcade, before it was released on home consoles, Scorpion was my dude. And then we met Noob Saibot, and then we got the full fleshing out of his story, and Noob Saibot became my other favorite. Uh, and then Smoke is number three, so I was pretty stoked with XL when we got Triborg and I could be Smoke again. Anyway... Uh, my sincere hope is that the at, if none of that is accurate, that at least Noob Saiba is accurate. Um, but we will only see as the... Oh, and he also says that it's going to be out in 2019, which that we know is likely accurate because that goes along with their uh, past release schedule. 
one new game every two years. They're kind of like the Olympics. So you get a new Mortal Kombat game every four years and a new Injustice game every four years, but they're offset. So it's it's Injustice, uh, and then two years later, Mortal Kombat, and then two years later, Injustice, and then two years later, Mortal Kombat. So that meshes well with that release strategy. Um, spending a lot of time in Mortal Kombat because I'm a Mortal Kombat nerd at heart, uh, to start at least. Uh, so we're moving on, even though I would love to do a whole episode, and likely will do a whole series of episodes on Mortal Kombat. But we are moving from Mortal Kombat into Injustice, so not too far removed. Uh, the E-League Championship finished this weekend, and if you did not watch the championship bracket, you missed some incredible fi uh, competitive fighting gameplay. Holy crap. Uh, so the kid who won, I, I got to be a little bit more clear on this because I was I rewatched last week's video and realized I didn't really talk about who won. It was Foxy Grandpa, uh, the the Foxy Grandpa and Tekken Master, and so this week it was it was another upset. So the dude who put out Sonic Fox in Group A, Sonic Fox being you know the dude who plays Netherrealm in his sleep. The guy who beat him was Forever King. Forever King got put out. So, like, the, it was it was just anyone's game. The uh, Dragon, the kid from, I think he's from Jersey, and he's like 15, and he was just incredible with his Black Adam. Uh, only had to do, I think, three matches, and everyone else had to play, like, four or five, uh, because he kept winning. So, you get put in the winner's circle, you gotta wait for everyone else to duke it out. And that's exactly what happened kid so it was uh foxy grandpa and dragon were the first first match and then uh dragon wins so he gets put into the winner's circle foxy grandpa has to fight his way back to the finals so the final match was foxy grandpa and dragon again uh foxy grandpa did switch it up though he he tried other characters so i gotta commend him for that because obviously what he was doing was not working so he went over to deadshot that worked even less <laughs> So he went, uh, I'm pretty sure it was uh, Batman. I'll, I'll definitely put a link in the description, but that was incredible. That was seriously, I, I was trying to work at the same time as I was watching it, because that's what I did. I mean, group, uh, group A bracket kind of threw me off for a little bit because Sonic Fox lost twice. But uh, usually I can get a little bit of work done while I'm watching the brackets, and I couldn't. I couldn't watch in this week's bracket. It was incredible. So that kid, Dragon, deserves that $150,000 he won for this tournament. That was awesome. Uh, so as part of that broadcast, we had the reveal for Fighter Pack number three for Injustice. And if you have been living under a rock for the last few days, I'm going to give you that right now. So... In the beginning of the video, we see some random chick who's got an amulet on her necklace, so it makes it, you know it's going to be Enchantress, but then it'll show you that she's Enchantress to begin with. The first actual character that we see is uh, Adam, and he's coming out of an exploding building, and he's jumping from piece to piece as he gradually gets bigger, uh, comes out... In the, the I can't remember the doctor's name. I'm sorry, internet, don't hate me. Uh, she comes upon some oil that then starts on fire and that sets her off somehow. And she turn, she becomes Enchantress. And so those two start fighting. And right as they're about to start taking swings, a sigh drops. And... I, I kind of spoiled it for myself because I was trying to avoid social media before I watched the reveal trailer. Um, I It was unsuccessful, so I saw that we were going to get Ninja Turtles. Uh, but if, if you were in the room at the E-League Championships and you saw that side drop, then my money goes that there's a lot of people who are thinking Molina. Even though Ed Boon said... We're not getting another Mortal Kombat character. He's a notorious troll, so that was entirely possible that we got another Mortal Kombat character. So a sigh hits, and it sticks into the ground, and then the camera turns around, and you see it's definitely not Molina. It's freaking Raphael from the 80s, the first live-action Ninja Turtles movie. He's got the, the uh, trench coat on and the hat, and he's coming up real casual. Well, B-Boy Walk kind of like Raph does, and... Uh, 
and he says something snarky about, yeah, you mind if I join or something? And then he throws it off, and then all the other three turtles drop down, and we get freaking Ninja Turtles. And so... My first thought when I first watched the trailer was, holy crap, They're so they're going to add six characters to DLC number three? Um, but then if you listen closely, you can hear Leo say that we fight as a team. So we have a completely... All right, so we've got a, a, a couple of options if that's the case. If they're going to go put the turtles in as a single selectable, selectable fighter, um, either they are going to be all on the screen at once and there's I, don't, I i really don't know how they would do that maybe it's different um they're they're each different skins um so like you have the i the premiere skins there's they, they each are it's, it's set up like that so that they look different but they effectively have the same moves uh they can then give them different animations because like uh raiden and black lightning while they have the same moves, they look different. Like, Raiden has a dragon that swirls around, and Black Lightning has a, an electric fist that swirls around. So they can do that, use them as premiere skins, or have them all four on screen at the same time. Uh, that's really interesting, though. Like, how are you going to set up the weapon system for it if they're, if they're different premiere skins? Or if they're all on screen at the same time, how are you going to balance the gameplay that just... it's there's so many questions involved with that so um yeah so big reveal there uh e-league was awesome L league of legends was done last week and the other big gaming news is right now and I'm, I'm i'm missing this as well so this will also go in the supplement uh probably gonna put it in the tv news section like i generally do since it'll be mostly walking dead but rocket league is going to be or i could cut up the supplement it doesn't all have to be in one spot so i'll insert it here rocket league is going on right now the 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 i think it's the american championships are going on right now uh it's been a lot of really fun gameplay there as well um some of the same teams that were that do league of legends do rocket league fanatic i know is in there uh, i i didn't write them down just because i know i'm going to do that supplement so insert supplement here gale force esports won season four of the rocket league world championships uh and it was world not just uh, american so it was all of the professional esports teams uh it was super one-sided too so i mean not that it wasn't exciting to watch but gale force took all four of their rounds so yeah it was good stuff and now we will get you back to your regularly scheduled weekend nerddom and we're moving on uh i think that's actually it for video games guys Yes, we are moving into movie news now, so, movies. So, if you watch this channel often, <laughs> uh, you know I really like Star Wars. And because I really like Star Wars, uh, I, I talk about it often. And I also am a big fan of Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson made two movies, one of which I'm a huge fan of, the other which is pretty good, I'm just not a great fan of it. Uh, the, the, the movie I'm a huge fan of is Brick. Easily one of my five top movies of all time. And if you haven't seen it, find it, go on iTunes, download it, whatever you gotta do to get your hands on that movie, Brick. It's got jo it stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt. It's seriously one of the best dialogue movies it's super dialogue heavy but it's fantastic so watch it if you like ryan johnson because you watched uh i think the other one is looper which also stars joseph gordon levitt and bruce willis um if you like that movie definitely check out brick if you like noir style movies brick has got to be one of your movies to watch um if you haven't seen it yet you're missing out Anyway, so Ryan Johnson did those two movies, Looper and Brick, and I'm sure he's done other stuff too because he gradually is getting bigger and bigger, and he's basically at the biggest movie he could ever do. It's Star Wars. We're about to get Star Wars Episode 9, or Episode 9, Star Wars Episode 8, 
uh, The Last Jedi, was Ryan Johnson directing. And I said when we lost our director for Episode Nine that I would love for Ryan Johnson to come back and direct another Star Wars movie. And then uh, it came out that J.J. Abrams was going to take direction. I was like, well, that's a bit of a bummer because I'm a bigger fan of Johnson than Abrams, although Abrams does some brilliant stuff. I just think he's a better producer than director. Anyway, um, now we have a new announcement. All of that rambling was leading us somewhere, I promise you. We have a new announcement from Kathleen Kennedy over at Lucasfilm Disney, or Disney Lucasfilm, however you're supposed to say that, um, that Ryan Johnson is getting a whole new trilogy. Uh, this is incredible like we talked before about how there's going to be movies past episode uh, nine uh they were looking into expanding this universe because before disney bought it it was a huge universe anyway so now that disney has it they shrunk it down a little bit they're looking to expand and they're gonna expand in a really fantastic way because ryan johnson and i'm a big fan he's no uh david fincher david fincher is probably my absolute favorite director ever um, there's a lot of fantastic video essays written. I'll probably link to one or two in the description. But anyway, uh, Johnson's getting Star Wars uh, a whole trilogy. And this is not going to be a Skywalker trilogy. We know that much because uh, supposedly Episode Nine is the end of the Skywalker saga. Um, so this is going to be a whole new trilogy. Now, well, one of the hopes I saw online that I totally wholeheartedly echo is... They should give him uh, Knights of the Old Republic. That should be the Ryan Johnson trilogies. We should get a whole trilogy that goes even further back than the prequels did and just shows us the beginning of the Republic, uh, the, the, the old Jedi ways. There is, that is such a rich, rich uh, mine to mine that yeah there's there's a lot of fantastic stuff that we can do there and there's a lot of room because all of that is technically mythology in the star wars universe now we can we he can change it and mold it as he sees fit and then it will kind of make those video games canon again so it'll be a fan service too because everybody wants that to happen so make it happen please uh yeah i'm 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 on board it regardless of what johnson does it's going to be great i just feel like Knights of the Old Republic is the best way f for that to go. Or I could be proven wrong when we start seeing those movies. Who knows? Um, and then the uh, uh, another thing that we teased in the beginning of this episode is we have Shazam casting news. Uh, the kid has now been cast. We have uh, Asher Angel is the name of the kid who's going to be playing Billy Baston. Uh, Batson, sorry. I can read. Uh, so he's best known for being on the Disney show Andy Mac. Um, he will be the boy version of Shazam. Uh, so whenever he says Shazam, he turns into Zachary Levi. It's a little weird. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so that's really cool. And then we're moving on to a, a strange announcement. So... Sean Madden, who works for the Marvel Report, uh, got some information that he was teasing on his Twitter somehow. I don't know how he came upon this information. He tweeted a picture that had some, some DC... No, 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 that was the second tweet. The first tweet was just him saying that there's some big news for the DCEU that a Young Justice character, I believe, is going to be in uh, an upcoming movie. Um... So, that was too teasery for a lot of fans, and they started harassing him. So, he tweeted a picture and then listed 12 characters uh, that p he could have potentially been talking about. All of the characters that he listed, save for one, are all um, tied up otherwise. And that one that is not tied up is the Blue Beetle. Now, they're not tied up necessarily i mean some of them are tied up because we know they're going to be in other things and so the likelihood is severely de uh smaller decreased uh that they're not going to appear in in anything coming up in the dc extended universe they're going to be on tv or we already know they're going to be in a certain movie and this is going to be <clears throat> a, a whole other movie 
Anyway, anyway, uh, they're all they're all tied up in in that, or they are um, too obscure. There would be too much explanation needed for them to appear, which isn't the best uh, litmus test, I guess, because we got a, a, a phoenix in X three, then there was zero explanation, zero accurate explanation, anyway. Um, so that's not, I, like I said, that's not the best way to judge, but it's, it's a fair way to judge. And so the only person, the only character is Blue Beetle that does not fall into all those, all of those qualifications. Um, so didn't say, didn't say what the movie was. Just said that it's going to be one of the movies that we know are coming. One of the projected movies that has no release date yet. So it could be in any number of things. Um, I, I, I really, really hope it's Blue Beetle. I really dig what they've done with Jaime as Blue Beetle. Uh, I didn't really read a whole lot of the original Blue Beetle. Uh, any of the original Blue Beetle. So I ha can't speak to that. Uh, there is no confirmation from wb that any of this is actually going to happen so we have no confirmation that it is if it is blue beetle it's going to be the rebirth slash new 52 jaime uh blue beetle um but it, I, I don't know why it wouldn't be because that's the one that's in the comic books right now so anyway that's really cool if it's true but we are moving on to uh that's a tv I put a TV news bit in my movie news bits. That doesn't make any sense. Um, so we'll get to that when we get to TV. But we're still talking movies. Uh, there was, ah, this morning. This morning? Yesterday morning? I can't remember. It's one of the days when I was doing the, the research for this. But I feel like it was this morning. No, no, it was yesterday morning. It was, it was Saturday morning. Saturday morning, Fox and Disney were in talks. Uh, in, in negotiations even for Disney to purchase a part of Fox, not all of Fox. They can't own Fox television uh, for legal reasons, um, like, like, uh, monopoly reasons. You can only w apparently own one broadcast, te uh, network television station, which is interesting. Uh, so that it's not for Fox TV. So all the Fox TV properties would be uh, standalone. There was actually no specifics as to what part of Fox they were talking about purchasing, but there is a lot of rumor that it was the Marvel movies, which would still apparently part of the deal negotiations was to keep Fox's brand on the movies, but they would be playing nice. Remember, we were talking a couple weeks ago uh, that if they would just play nice, then everyone would be happy and every... Uh, and, and, and they would make more money, all the fans would be more happy, because then you could have a proper Avengers, uh, it, just so much better if they just would communicate. Um, but there then were subsequently later, uh, yesterday, they were talking about how it didn't, nothing came of the meetings and Disney didn't actually buy it, but that was the Wall Street Journal that reported that it didn't, it didn't finish. Um, so... I don't trust it because I don't trust the Wall Street Journal. Anyway, so that's potential total awesomeness. Uh, just, yeah, really interesting. Now, moving into Rampage. We talked about the movie last time. Uh, the Rock is going to be a producer and also star in this movie somehow that's going to be a disaster. But... <laughs> We, there's a lot more to it, uh, casting wise and such, uh, it's going to, it's going to be released on April 20th of 2018. So 420. So that's appropriate. I feel like going to have to be high to go watch this movie. Um, uh, casting wise, we have, uh, Naomi Harris, Malin Ackerman, Joe Manganiello, uh, so Deadshot's gonna be, or Deadpool, Deadpool, good lord, Deathstroke is gonna be in it, uh, Jake Lacey, I don't know, Mary Shelton, Marley Shelton, sounds familiar, but I don't know, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan, what, this movie just got better, uh, Malin Ackerman, Silk Spectre 2, eh, uh, she's a whatever actress, but she's a name, uh, Joe Man Manganiello, again, eh, but Jeffrey Dean Morgan? 
that's... I, I like I, I really know I'm going to hate this movie and it makes me sad because I really like Jeffrey Dean Morgan so I don't know maybe maybe I'll be surprised maybe it'll be good but I doubt it um, so yeah that's and and also the other bit of news about this is we are likely to get a preview trailer for this movie at the beginning of the injustice movie injustice the uh, Justice League. Oh Lord! It's. I mean, it's still DC. I was close. The it, the Justice League movie that comes out next week, so or a week and a half, something like that. Uh, next week, by the time you're watching this, because it, like I said, it takes me like three or four days to edit these bad boys. So, that's. I mean, we'll all know better whether or not it's going to be just a train wreck by then. Um, which moves us very nicely into Justice League. Uh, just like we got with Thor, we're getting some early announcements on the people who have seen it, the professional movie reviewers. Um, and it's super, super mixed. They're saying, well, at least it's better than Suicide Squad, which when Suicide Squad came out, they were saying, well, at least it's better than Batman vs. Superman. Um, so I don't think that's a really big point. Uh, I saw a couple of reviewers say that, uh, they really enjoyed what they did with Ezra Miller's Flash. Uh, that was one of my worries about this movie is what are they going to do with the Flash? Because it looks like they're making him into this loner, which is very antithetical to the Flash we know from the comic books. So... There's also a lot of uh, worry from reviewers saying that they might have swung too far in the other direction in that they were taking themselves way too seriously before and now they're, it might be a little too lighthearted. Um, also, they have the, the same issue that we've had in a lot of our superhero movies is that the um, villain just isn't enough, just isn't v villainous enough like there's there's we don't we don't have any empathy we don't care about how uh this villain is defeated we just know he's going to be defeated um so yeah there are some good things they have to say overall though it sounds like we're gonna get about a 50 percent on rotten tomatoes uh and which means uh, which means there's gonna be a lot to worry about but if they're moving in the in the proper direction then that's all the hope I can ask for is at least they're trying to course correct. At least they're going in a way that makes sense and we can get away from murder bats and and really crappy emo Superman and all of these things that we've just not really enjoyed from the last two, Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman. And then maybe they can take that cue and, and make Suicide Squad 2 into a watchable movie. Because that thing they released, while better than Batman vs. Superman, was not... That's not saying a whole lot. It's still, it still was hard to take it seriously. Anyway, moving on. Um, uh, sorry, my notes are sticking together. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're finally getting a Metal Gear movie. Uh, Metal Gear Solid will be coming to the big screen, courtesy of the writer from Jurassic World, Derek Connolly. Uh, Connolly was talking with Variety Magazine and has told them that he is writing the script for uh, the video game adaptation. This is the, He also did um, Kong Skull Island, and uh, one of the other writers on Kong Skull Island is Jordan uh, Vogt-Roberts, who will apparently be directing this movie. So this has been a movie that there's been talks of doing almost as long as we, as there's been talks of doing like, or even longer even, uh, because Metal Gear's been along longer than, been around longer than Bioshock. So we've been getting rumors that there's a Bioshock movie somewhere in the works. We've been getting rumors that they want to make a Metal Gear movie forever since the PlayStation 1 version came out because it was so freaking cinematic and really popular and Hideo Kojima knows how to tell a story like the best of them so uh yeah that's that's really cool that there's actual announcement from the people who do the things in Hollywood that they're saying yes we're gonna do this uh one strange thing is that Konami doesn't make this game anymore they own the rights because they, they that's how that relationship apparently works with uh, an employee, namely Hideo. 
who created a thing for that video game company. They fired Hideo, uh, and they get to keep Metal Gear. But they're not making these games. Like, that's... Uh, that's a that's one of the most frustrating things is because they're not making video games anymore. They they stepped out of the video game market so they can make gambling machines in Tokyo because they make more money doing that than they do making video games for the states somehow or for the world, let alone. So that's a little aggravating that they're like, "Oh, well we have this great money making property, but we're not making games anymore. Let's make movies." So, that's that's I don't know. Capitalism at its best, I guess. You do what you can to make buck. That's that's totally cool. As long as it's quality, as long as you're giving the people what they want, then I don't see what's wrong with it. Um, and then to round out this, I didn't know where else to put this. Sometimes I do do a, a doo doo. <laughs> Sometimes I do have a miscellaneous section in these episodes, but this seemed fitting to go here because it's primarily Hollywood that is ha that that this affects. Um, George Takai, I really didn't, can't remember if you're supposed to say Takai or Takei, either way, uh, is being accused, just like so many other people in Hollywood, is being accused of uh, sexual assault. Not just being inappropriate or sexual harassment, full-on assault. Which he wholeheartedly denies, and I, I'm, I'm with you, George, I feel like... Takai, Takai, I'm sorry. Um, I, 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 I really hope that this trend of coming clean 30 years later stops and we start coming clean immediately. Or we tell somebody, and, and a lot of these, especially the Louis C.K. stuff, a lot of these people actually did come out and say, hey, this happened and it was inappropriate and everyone needs to know. They just got silenced. And that's probably almost as big of an issue as the fact that it's so uh commonplace in in hollywood that that there's even uh uh an atmosphere of harassment or uh, assault because what louis ck did falls into the category of assault so i and, and also i i don't think that removing kevin spacey from movies is called for um yes what he does in his personal life is despicable or what he did in his personal life years ago is despicable but let's put that into a little bit better context one it was years and years ago uh, anthony rapp is older than me and it happened when he was 14 um that again does not make it any better but he's that that doesn't make the movies he's made any worse either um I, american beauty is one of my absolute most favorite movies ever and it will continue to be one of my absolute most favorite movies ever and uh, that is due in large part to kevin spacey's performance because he is a damn good actor the uh, seven also a fantastic performance from a lot of really fantastic, well, a lot, the three of them, uh, Spacey, Brad Pitt, and, and Morgan Freeman. All three of them are fantastic in that movie. And if it comes out tomorrow that Brad Pitt has been a despicable person in his personal life, that will continue to be a fantastic movie. Fight Club will continue to be my favorite movie of all time in spite of their personal lives because they're celebrities. They are people. They get to have personal lives. And if something horrible happens in their personal life, that does not diminish their art. If they did something absolutely terrible in their personal life, then it does not diminish the art they've created. We, we as a society, have had despicable artists uh, become famous all throughout the history of our culture. So why would this era be any different? So, I don't know. I, I guess that one's on you guys. Uh, all of my nerdy, nerdy compatriots, although I know I just lost half of you by making these statements, 
Um, let's discuss this in the in the in the comments down below. Uh, is does something personal coming to light? Something really horrible in someone's personal life. Does that coming to light then diminish your enjoyment of these wonderful things these people have created? Uh, either at the time they were doing the horrible thing or since they've done the horrible thing that we didn't know about. Uh, let's talk about that in the comments. Uh, but that is the end of the movie section. Kind of a down, uh, bummer section this week. I'm sorry about that. Usually we have fun over here on the week in nerddom. All of the generally nerdy stuff is, is supposed to be in good, lighthearted humor, and, and this is just something that needed to be talked about. So... Let's take a breath, and we're going to move into comic books. Okay. Now that we've breathed, took, you know, a couple seconds to breathe and let our emotions calm, we're going to get back into the fun part of the news. We're talking comic books in this section. Uh, this is going to be a short section this week. Just There was so much going on, I just was a little overwhelmed. So I only took the three that kind of sparked my interest the most. And one of them is more White Knight stuff. I know you guys are probably tired of hearing about it now, but I'm, I'm really digging this stuff. So um, turns out we learned that Harley that we've been seeing, and this is according to uh, this kind of uh, Elseworld story that is uh, Batman White Knight. Um, but according to this universe, this Elseworld, which there's been talk that it might go a little killing joke and become canon. Um, Harley in this world has not been Harley according to the last book that came out. Um, it's been a different, a different lady named Marion Drews. Uh, who's been mar masquerading as Harley since the death of Jason Todd. So since Jason Todd Robin, uh, Har that's when the real Harleen, who what is what she's calling herself in the comic, um, Harleen went and got Batman and said, hey, he's going to kill Jason, uh, even though I don't remember that happening in the book. But uh, so she she's crediting herself with trying to save Jason and Joker was so out of his mind, according again to white Knight, that he doesn't remember if he killed Jason Todd, which obviously we know he didn't because the red hood is a thing. Um, so, uh, the original Harley Harleen is her real name, um, has come back and is now wanting to be with this good Joker with Jack, uh, Jack Napier. So they went with the storyline that the Tim Burton uh, movies went with in the '90s, where it, he was a mob, he was a mob guy who had who fell in the vat and and so on and so forth. So um, Harleen is fighting uh, Marion, who is the Harley Quinn that we apparently have known for the last little while, and like the there's the panel where she's carrying Jack, carrying the Joker, good Joker, out of uh, a warehouse, I think, is where the, the fight was, and, and Harley, uh, Marion, whatever, is wearing, like, something resembling the Suicide Squad outfit, and she said, and, and Harleen is saying, you're not what he needs, and what it was, and she's, like, ripping on her because she's got big boobs, and she's like, this isn't, it was, it was really funny and also really poignant. This whole White Knight story arc is, is fantastic. You need to read it. Um, anyway, so that was really interesting. Um, that moves us into... I, this is kind of, sort of, I'll, I'll put that off until the end. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis. Um, Brian Michael Bendis announced two days ago, uh, yesterday. Yeah. S Saturday. Um, I'm pretty sure. That uh, he's signed an exclusive deal with DC. One of Marvel's frontrunner story writers is jumping ship and trading sides, man. Um... There's speculation that that means there's a, there's going to be Marvel. Uh, Marvel is going to go back to their predominantly white male cisgender blah 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 uh, at non non diverse cast. Um, I feel like that's a lot of crying wolf 
because there's no reason to believe that that would be the case. Um, it just means that uh, the the what little good like good good writing they had over Marvel is going to be diminished that much more because they're losing one of their main guys. Um, and and no announcement as of exactly when that's going to happen because Bendis is set to uh, be the writer on a couple of big story arcs that are happening right now over at Marvel. So uh, that's going to happen. He's the one that announced it and he's he's been talking to everybody about it. So very interesting. Um, we'll just keep our eyes on that and see what happens, man. He's 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 he posted a picture of so many DC books. Uh, and he's doing his homework. He said he's looking forward to doing it. So I th we'll see what that means for DC in the in the coming uh, months and years and so on and so forth. I think it was a three year contract that he signed exclusivity with DC. So uh, moving into this one's quasi TV news, but we're gonna keep it in uh, comic books because it's there. There wasn't a whole lot going on in comic books uh, that I got anyway. Um, Umbrella Academy, the the comic book that Gerard Way, I don't remember, who's the other guy? Uh, Gerard Way and Gabriel Ba, uh, the comic that those two, if Gerard Way, for those of you that don't know, was the lead singer for My Chemical Romance, so he's got that going against him, but Umbrella Academy, I've never read it, partially because it's written by Gerard Way, but it's gotten so much critical praise, it's on my list of things that I need to read. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, apparently, it's really, really good, and so good, in fact, that Netflix has taken uh, notice, and they are now contracting a series. Uh, t I mean, it's really difficult to call anything on Netflix a TV series, but it's technically a TV series because it's Netflix. Um, but so there, 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 there's, they, there's a season one that's going to happen and Ellen Page is announced. Uh, she's going to be Vanya, who is apparently the only character in there that has no powers. And that is the end of comic books. We are moving into TV news next. TV news. All right, so the, the bit that I put in the wrong place <laughs> was that Wentworth Miller, uh, Captain Cold, is leaving the Arrowverse. He's no longer going to be on DC's Legends of Tomorrow. He's not going to have crossover events with uh, Arrow and Flash and all of these things that he's doing. He's uh, set to doodly-doo. He wrote... A, an episode, or wait, no. Oh, he wrote the post, because he did it on uh, uh, Twitter. Social media of some kind. He wrote the post. He, 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 I, th I feel like I heard that he was supposed to direct an episode sometime, but I, I can't confirm that, because, say it with me, I take bad notes. Um, but yeah, I'm learning. I'm getting better about it. Don't give me shit. So, other TV news, uh, Daredevil, while we know it's going to be going for at least a few more seasons, uh, we don't know anything about the upcoming seasons, except Vincent D'Onofrio has tweeted that he is going to be returning for season three. So we are getting a kingpin uh, for season three. One of probably the better parts of season one is returning. Uh, so that's really awesome. Not that season two was bad, just that uh, season one was slightly better, and that has a lot to do with D'Onofrio's Kingpin, because that was... He's hes a fantastic actor. I'm a big fan of Vincent D'Onofrio. Um, other TV news. Uh, not huge announcements, but still pretty cool announcements. The Orville has been picked up for a second season, so we're going to get some more quasi-Star Trek lampooning uh, stuff, which... Uh, actually is probably one of the better Star Wars series out there, or Star Trek series out there. Um, and it's not even Star Trek. So it's really funny because sometimes I'll be watching it and my girlfriend will go, I, it, this isn't Star Trek? What's going on? Um, I'm paraphrasing, but it's funny. All right, so I'm not going to be able to do the supplement for the... Um, 
adventure in photography. I might be able to throw some pictures in at the end, but I, I really think I'm going to be done editing this episode before I get to the show, which is a good thing because, you know, I'm usually not uh, this quick with the edit. It's only been two days since I recorded initially, so. But I did watch The Walking Dead. <clears throat> I did watch The Walking Dead, and this week's episode was was a little bit of a mixed bag, not a mixed bag in quality, because it was all good, but it was a mixed bag in style. Um, they are getting super stylized with their cinematography, and it's, and it's a beautiful thing to watch, uh, but... It was so the episode started off a little slow. We had uh, a little bit more character uh, building for King Ezekiel, and and that was it, that. Like I said a couple weeks ago, that Walking Dead, the the showrunners on that show, really know how to pace it out. Um, and. Man, <laughs> the, so yeah, it started off a little slow. We get a little bit of character, a little bit more history. No, well, not necessarily history, because it was it's all re recent history. So it's not before we met them. It's um, we get a little bit more of the relationship he has with his followers, and and it was it was it was really good. And then we cut to today and we see basically all of them are dead and he crawls out from underneath a pile of them and then from there the pace dramatically changes and we see <clears throat> basically three different battles that all tie in together we ha we see uh, King Ezekiel is battling his followers as zombies and then uh, that turns into, I, I don't even know the dude's name. I don't think they gave the guy's name. It was one of the guys who uh, sniped him out. And apparently it's there's no, um, there's no mole in Rick's group in the, the good guy side. Um, the, there's just a savior literally under every scum rock. Uh, that's, I mean, we don't know that for certain, but that's, that's kind of what this episode made it seem is that, well, maybe there's not a mole. Maybe it's just legitimately that, uh, there, there are so many saviors. They can be everywhere at once. Um, so, and then the other battle is, uh, oh man, brain fart. What was her name? Claire? I can't think of her name. The the, I mean, watch the episode because it's great. It's the, it's the best thing that I saw on television uh, last week. So, and this season so far is one of the better seasons on the best show on television. Um, I really want to say her name's Claire, but I'm fairly certain that's wrong. And I don't have any notes for this, so I can't blame it on my bad notes. I just. I don't know. I'm half asleep recording this, so that's probably partially why I'm having the brain fart. Anyway, uh, the the second battle is her fighting the guys who mowed down the group because she was with King Ezekiel and his followers. Um, so she apparently snuck around and is inside the building from where those giant guns were. And has taken dudes out. She is such a badass. Um, yeah, like, there's too many of them for her, so she hides up in the ceiling tiles and then mows them down through the ceiling tiles. Yeah, she's she's easily one of my favorite characters in the show. Um, and then the other battle, I guess Rick and uh, Daryl are not really in a battle necessarily um but those are the three those are the three groups those are the three uh people that we're following is ezekiel uh 
Claire, <laughs> because my brain hurts trying to think of a, uh, of her actual name, and then Rick and Daryl. Those are the three stories that we're following for this episode. And uh, Ezekiel and Claire uh, combine uh, about midway through the episode, probably a little closer to the end of Act 2, and King Ezekiel is questioning very hard questioning whether or not he's actually a king because he just lost a lot of his uh, followers. He just lost a lot of his subjects. And his dude, the the big dude with the with the battle axe, just comes out of nowhere and takes out this cat who's got him uh, at gunpoint. Literally cleaved in twain. Just, it was... It was a sight to behold. Oh my god, that whole and then he's still like he's he's really battling with himself, um, and they're trying to get through a fence, and and Claire's uh, battle has brought her out into a, uh, a vehicle yard uh, outside of this warehouse, and she sees Ezekiel and dude trying to get in. Uh, where she is, because there's a bunch of walkers on the other uh, that are coming up after them. Um, so she has a she has a, 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 a decision to make. That's not what I was trying to say, but it works. She has a decision to make. She's either going to stay in this standoff with these douchebags who uh, who are going to take these guns somewhere up to... Uh, they're going to take them to Sanctuary, and then they're going to refortify the Sanctuary for the Saviors. Um, or she can go help save Ezekiel, and she chooses to save her friend, which, you know, at the beginning of the season, or even last season, that version of Claire... Well, I don't know, be, not necessarily the beginning of this season, because we're still kind of in the beginning of this season, but... Last season, at the beginning of the season, she would have probably not even gone on this battle if she was still in that mindset. So it's kind of an interesting story arc for her. Um, so she, they, they bring Ezekiel in. He's been shot in the leg, so he's mostly just hobbling, um, using, using the other two people as support. And they're going through and, uh, Oh man, uh, it's so many feels about this episode. When they 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 have to kind of cut through a swamp because they're being followed by so many walkers, and the uh, the saviors are going to become an issue if they can't get somewhere safe. So they cut through this swamp looking like thing. And they get overwhelmed, and Ezekiel's, I'm just slowing you down, and he grabs his, his blade out, and he's like, go, I'll, I'll hold him off as long as I can, and they're like, no, we're not going to let you kill yourself. And then Shiva, his tiger, comes in, and man, just the death of this tiger is so emotional. Like, I got more emotional over the death of his tiger than I did on some of the like character deaths this the the weight of this death is almost as as uh, good as um oh i can't remember his name now the preacher uh molly's dead so or maggie molly maggie's dead um and that was a really intense death because that was you know the days of the governor and the governor did, chopped his head off uh, really unexpectedly. Um, anyway, so she Claire's uh, says uh, something about how she had to let the guys go with the guns, and and there and Ezekiel's like you shouldn't have done that because now they're gonna take those guns to sanctuary, and we hear a motorcycle. And she said they're not gonna make it to sanctuary, and then it cuts to. Uh, Daryl and Rick who are chasing down these guys with the guns and that becomes like you so you, you're rooting for them it's so awesome and then it like that's all that's that's basically the whole uh, episode and then uh, we see 
player in Ezekiel, and I, I, I still can't think of dude's name, uh, the big dude. Uh, they walk into, I think it was the hilltop, because um, I'm pretty sure that's geographically closest to where uh, the their battle was taking place. So, man, it was... It was intense. It was a it was a great episode. Um, it's it's good to see Rick and cl- and crew getting smart and and staying smart. Uh, they 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 they're slipping because they're you know humanity is starting to get in the way in some ways. Um, so uh, there was no real check in with Jesus and. And that whole group, where they're they're bringing back those uh, savior t- folk as prisoners, um, didn't check in with those guys. Though uh, most of them died, so we don't know exactly what's going on over there. And we know Morgan's still alive um, because it was he and Jesus that were fighting about what to do with these prisoners. And his humanity is kind of coming back, it, it would seem, thanks to Jesus. And, yeah, no, it's... Whew, I can't wait for next week's episode. Uh, actually, I don't know if there's going to be an episode next week. This We might be on... No, I think we've got one more episode before break. So, uh, next week's episode, and then they're going to take a few weeks off uh, because it's the holidays, and apparently that's what they do every year, and it's annoying AF. Uh, that being said, we now return you to your regularly scheduled week in nerddom. Um, so, Orville Season 2, and then The Magicians. Felicia Day has uh, been announced to be joining the Mu- Magicians cast in Season 4. She's going to be playing Poppy, so that's kind of cool. That's a... A series I watch in passing. I, I mean, I watched the entire first two seasons. I haven't really caught much on season three. Um, I did interview Hale Appleman, and I'll try and put a link or a card uh, somewhere around here, assuming I can figure out how those work, because I'm an old man. Um, but yeah, that's it for TV news. Next, and finally, we are moving into music news. music news i'm gonna try and do this differently than i did movies we ended movies on a really down note and that didn't feel really good so we're going to start music on kind of a down note (laughs) hopefully we'll it won't be that down that down of a note well serious i guess down is not accurate but serious uh so uh we don't get super political over here at generally nerdy we do a little bit because we're we're people and people have opinions and just so happens that my opinions occasionally steer in the political realm. Um, though this is politics, it's straight up. Um, Danica Rome, uh, who is has just been elected the first transgender. Um, where is it? Uh, what is the freaking office she just got elected to? Senate, I believe. Something. She's the first transgender person in in, a, in an office. Again, what did we learn from my note taking? It sucks. Um, it's not all that bad. Anyway, uh, first transgender. The reason we're talking about this in music is because not only is she a po- politician, but she's also a thrash metal vocalist, which I find endlessly entertaining. Um, the name of uh, her band is Cab Ride Home, and they put out their first album at the beginning of this year. It's called Crash the Gate. It just And they describe themselves as, and then I'll put the notes down, I promise, a drunken thrash metal band whose songs are about drinking and their shows are about raging. So that's the person that just got elected into office. Um... And and elected as a Democrat, which I don't know. There's just it's just very strange situation, and it was really interesting to find out that she's a thrash metal vocalist. Um, yeah. Anyway, moving on because we're not dwelling too long on the super political seriousness. 
Um, Cavalera Conspiracy is putting out a new album. Uh, Old Max and Igor are are at it again. Uh, I don't know the rest of the lineup for this album uh, because Duplantier is no longer playing with them. Their first record is one of the heavier, though definitely stereotypical Max Cavalera uh, style stuff. Um, so Captain Four Strings is at it again, and it's going to be really solid. Um, the reviews that I've seen of it so far are it kind of dips into his new metal kind of sound that he did with Soulfly, which isn't necessarily a great thing, but not bad either. So new Cavalera Conspiracy record, uh, new, and this one, I'm probably going to alienate some heavy music fans by saying this, but I'm quasi fan of Story of the Year, and they're putting out their first album in seven years. Uh, I haven't really listened to much since that Black Swan record because that was the one that I really dug. Uh gonna get, definitely give this one a listen just because it's been a while and it's really interesting to see these like post post hardcore like a stupid genre defining crap um but yeah see, i'm interested to see what happens uh, now that that kind of sound is no longer what's cool if if they're going to stay with that sound if they're going to try and update to something more modern um one of the coolest, and I'm saving the two coolest pieces for the last of this week's episode, the first of which is Wes Borland, my man, uh, the reason to like Limp Biscuit <laughs> in a lot of ways. John Otto's a fantastic drummer. Uh, Sam Rivers is one of my favorite bass players ever, but Wes Borland is easily the biggest draw of Limp Biscuit. although I don't think Limp Biscuit is really doing much these days. They've got that Stampede of the Disco Elephants uh, record that's been, it's going to be their Chinese democracy is what it seems like. So, um, But West Borland just put out Big Dumb Face. I, I know if you already knew this, it, that I'm two weeks late on this because it happened on Halloween that they released it, but I, I lost track of it for about two weeks and that kind of bums me out. Uh, listened to some of the tracks yesterday morning, and it is a departure. Um, not entirely. There are still some goofy tracks, but there's a lot more of the heavy, heavy stuff. There was some of that on the first on Duke Lion Fights the Terror. Um, this one's called Duke Lion. Uh, Where's Duke Lion? He's Dead is the name of this record. And it's a lot more blasty, blasty beats and heavy, heavy guitars and the super distorted um, vocals that we got on some of the songs from the first record. This one's more of that stuff and less of the silly stuff, but there is still a couple of those silly tracks thrown in. So uh, definitely go hit that up on iTunes or wherever you can find it. Grab a physical copy. Go see and play it live even. It's probably the best way to do it. Um, so yeah, that's got me super excited about music right now just because Wes Borland is still doing music. He also apparently did a solo record because Big Dumb Face is <clears throat> his project with his brother. Um, he did a solo record, not a Black Lights Burn record even, a Black, Black Light Burns record. Uh, but it's just him um, called Crystal Machete last year. Uh, I just got my hands on a copy of that album, so we'll probably talk about that in... I don't know if I'll do it in the supplement or if I'll do a whole video on it. I'm still up in the air on that. <clears throat> but the last bit of news, and one of the cooler bits of the entire week, is this new track, Walk on Water. Um, Eminem, as we know, is is putting out, or I, I, it might be out already. I'm not going to... No, no, no. He's still releasing songs, so it's not quite out yet. Um, he's still doing promotion and stuff for it. Uh, Revival is going to be the name of it. And he just put out a song with Beyonce. So <clears throat> super, super stripped down song. It's just uh, those two voices and a piano. And I really, I really, really dig it. So uh, Taylor Swift has put out her album. And that's literally what all of the pop music news is about and all of the country music news is about right now online is everyone loves taylor swift and blah 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 that record sucks the only other thing that i could find there's a little bit of sam smith news because he did some really great performances i guess i haven't watched him yet so we're not going to talk about him but the other thing that i saw was eminem and that got a couple more headlines than the sam smith and what made it through the Taylor Swift freaking barrage. And uh, yeah, it's 
it's it's pretty intense. The 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 I mean it's it's fantastic. It's M probably at his best. Um, and Beyonce definitely never thought I would see those two on a track together for a plethora of reasons. But it's worth a listen. Definitely download that and uh, talk about it in the comments. What did you think of that record? Is it is it is that song good enough that it deserves to be coming through all of this Taylor Swift nonsense? Um, I know I'm talking a lot of crap about Taylor Swift. I don't necessarily mind Taylor Swift. It's just this new record from everything I've heard sucks. Um, but yeah, that's the end of this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way through uh, my ramblings and such. Um, remember, uh, and, and I don't know why I'm putting this here, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm doing an Adventures in Photography. I'm going to hit it on the uh, Twitter and Facebook and so on and so forth. Going to a live hip-hop show. Uh, are there shots that you want to see me get? Let's talk about that. <clears throat> and also, patreon.com slash generally nerdy is the Patreon. You can support me over there for just a dollar a month. Um, generally nerdy.net is the website. <clears throat> so many things. You can find me on uh, Instagram, Twitter. Just look for generally nerdy. Twitter, I think it's generally underscore nerdy. Instagram, it's just generally nerdy, all one word. Uh, that's it. Like, subscribe, share, retweet, all of the things that everybody says. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button. If you are not new here, let's talk about some of this news in the comments section. And I've got pictures falling behind me, so that means we got to end. I do want to remind you guys, though, uh, just, just know that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.